In this tutorial, we're going to show you how to create the vectors for the magic bean sign you see on the screen. We're going to walk you through the various ways that you can create vectors in the software, how to edit them, and we'll also show you how to create and edit text. And to get started, we just need to close out, so we'll go to File, Close. So let's start now by creating a new job. So we'll go to File, New, and we're going to be working with a single-sided job. The width is going to be 24 inches. The height will be 36 inches and we'll have a material thickness of one inch. The Z0 position will be from the material surface and the XY dating position in this case will be in the center. And you'll see that indicated here with this red square. And then we can click OK to apply that. And there you'll see our rectangular workspace. So because this is a drawing exercise, I just want to take a moment just to review my snap options. So you can access these by going to edit, and scrolling down to snap options or you could use the keyboard shortcut of pressing F4 and we'll click that to open the snapping options form and looking through these I can see we've got geometry snapping switched on so we've got the checkbox checked and we also have smart snapping switched on so we can check those by coming into this form here but alternatively we can also do the same from the user interface so at the top here you'll see the view toolbar with these two icons and they're currently both shaded blue, which indicates that the geometry snapping and smart snapping are both switched on. So this icon represents geometry snapping and this icon represents smart snapping. And you can toggle these on and off directly from the interface up here instead of having to go into the snapping options form. This option here represents our snap grid and it's currently not blue because we haven't actually got this switched on. So the checkbox is empty. And this icon is greyed out, indicating that the snap grid is currently switched off. So as we move on here and start drawing this sign up, the smart snapping in particular is going to be really helpful to me. And this really makes it a lot easier to draw shapes and align objects. And you'll see this demonstrated throughout this tutorial. Then moving through the form, we also have snapping radius, which is currently set at 10 pixels. Now, because I'm going to be working with fairly straightforward basic shapes here, I'm going to leave that in the middle at 10. Uh, but if you were working with more complex geometry, you may wish to use a smaller snapping radius. Or more simple, you can use a larger snapping radius. Just to make it a lot easier, again, to draw objects and align them. And you might find that you want to play around with the snapping radius a bit, just to find the most comfortable setting for yourself. So that's all that we're going to need to look at for now. But if you want to learn more about the snapping options, we do have a video available called Introduction to Vector Drawing, which will cover these in much more detail. But for now, I'm happy with these settings, so I can go ahead and click OK. And now we can go ahead and look at drawing the first vectors, which will form the base shape of our sign. And the first shape is going to be a rectangle, so we'll come over to the Drawing panel under Create Vectors, and we'll use the Draw Rectangle command. And you'll see in the form that we've got several options in order to create the rectangle. But the first thing that we want to set is our anchor point. So we're going to want that in the center where X is zero and Y is also zero. So in the center of the workspace here. And we're going to create our rectangle based on that anchor point being in the center at the XY datum. Moving on down, corner type, we want a square corner. And the width we're going to want to be 15 inches and a height of 30 inches. And once we've done that, we can go ahead and click Create and you'll see our rectangle placed on the workspace. And now we've done that, we can close out of the form and we're going to look at creating our next vector. So this one's going to be a circle. So again, under Create Vectors, use the Draw Circle command. And this time, instead of specifying our dimensions in the form, we can also look to manually draw this circle in the 2D view. So again, I want to create this around our center point. So if I move the cursor in, and with the snapping option selected, the cursor will then change to indicate the center point. And we can click and hold the left mouse button, and we can just drag that cursor out from the center, and you'll see that you can grow that circle from the center point by moving the mouse outwards. And if you want to go smaller, you can move it back in towards the center. And you'll see displayed next to it a diameter that it will change as I move it outward to grow the circle and it will decrease if I move it in towards the center. So that's displaying the diameter of the given circle. And in this case, I want a diameter of 21 inches. So I can just keep dragging that out to grow the circle from the center until I see displayed there diameter 21. 
And then once I see that, I can then just let go of the mouse button completely and that will place the circle with a diameter of 21 inches. Okay, so we can now close out of the form and now I want to look at aligning my circle with the top of the rectangle. And to do that, I'm just going to click on that again to put that into transform mode. And then I'll hover the cursor over the top point there. And then just clicking and holding down the left mouse button there, we can then drag that up and we'll pull it up till we meet the top line of the rectangle there. And you can see, judging by all of the snapping lines there, that we are now aligned to the top of the rectangle and we can just left, let go of the left mouse key and that will place the circle aligned with the top of the rectangle there. And now with that in place, the next step is to apply a few offsets to the circle. So with the vector still selected, we're gonna come over to the drawing panel again and under offset and layout, we're going to use the offset command where we can create offsets based on the vector that we have selected. And the first offset I want to make is outwards by three quarters of an inch. So we can select outwards and the distance we can enter into there, 0.75. We don't need to create sharp offset corners. Uh, delete original will delete the original vectors and select the new one. And select new will preserve the original vectors, but it will select the newly offset vector as the currently selected object. So we don't need either of those, so I can just click Offset. So there's our newly created vector, and with our original vector still selected, we now want to offset this inwards. So we can come back over to the form, and selecting inwards this time, we're gonna come in by half an inch, and this time we're going to choose the Select New checkbox, so that when we create the new vector, that will be the currently selected vector rather than the original. So I'll just click Offset to apply, and there you can see we've got the new vector selected. And then from there, we then want to offset that inwards again by four inches. So still inwards, come down to the distance, we can put four in there. Select new, still selected, and then we can click offset. And that will offset that vector inwards by four inches. And we've still got this new one selected because we're going to create another border for this internal edge. Again, by offsetting this by half an inch again. And there we go, so that's completed the circular offsets, and we just need to make some for the rectangular vector. So we'll select that vector instead, and we want to mirror the first offset that we did on the circle by offsetting this outwards by three quarters of an inch. So again, selecting outwards, 0.75, we'll keep select new selected, and you'll see that this time, because we're working with a rectangle, Without the create sharp offset corner selected, we've then got radius corners on the offset. So we can undo that. And if we select that and re-offset, you'll see that we've now maintained the sharp corners of the original vector. And now that we've also got the border on the rectangle as well, that's completed all the offsets that we need. So there's quite a few there. So we can now close out the form. And the next step in this is going to be welding some of these vectors together to create a single continuous border for our magic bean sign. So I've already got the outer rectangle selected. So by holding shift, I can also select the very outer circle. And it's these two that I want to weld together first. So with those both selected, I can come under edit objects and we'll use the weld command and just click that once. And you'll see that any part of either vector that was within the area that the two shapes overlap has now been deleted. So it's welded and fused these two together. And now we've got the outer border, we're going to do the same for the inner, so this uh, three quarter offset here. So we'll select the two sets of vectors again and use the weld command. And there we go, we've got our consistent border for the magic bean sign. The next step that we'll take for this drawing is creating some hanging holes. And to do that, we're going to need to draw some circles up in the corners. So we're going to come over to create vectors again, choose to draw a circle, and we're going to snap to this top corner here. And I'm going to look to create this circle using the transform shortcut keys. And the way to do this is to click and hold down the left mouse button where you've got the center point where you need it to be. And then we can enter a diameter using our keyboard. And in this case, I want a diameter of one and one quarter inches so I can enter in. 1.25 and you'll see down in the bottom right hand corner you'll see under value the diameter is then displayed 
but it won't know whether you want this to be diameter or radius until you hit either D or R on the keyboard. So I can just hit D and that's then created a circle with a diameter of 1.25 inches around the center point that I selected by the placement of the cursor. And with that done, we can close out to the form. So the circle's the correct diameter, but I actually need to change the placement here. So I'd need to move it more in towards the blank area after the border here. So because I actually know the exact value that I want to move this by, instead of just placing it roughly, I can come over to transform objects with that vector selected. And we're going to use the move selected objects command. And you'll see in the form that we've got the option to select an anchor point and moving on down type of move. So this gives us the option to make an absolute move. So this is related to the XY datum or a relative move. So it will move it by the values you've specified in relation to its current placement, not in relation to the XY datum. And in this case, we do want to move it relative to its current position. And we're going to move it in X by two and in Y by negative two and then we can click apply. And with the first hang and hold place, we now need to mirror this across the center of our part over to the right hand side. So to do this with the vector selected again, this time we're going to come under transform objects and we're going to use the mirror selected objects command. And we'll just have a look at some of these options here. So we want to flip it about the job center. So that's our center line, create a mirrored copy, with this selected, this will preserve the original vector that we're making a mirrored copy of. If I deselect this, and then we want to flip it horizontally, so we'll just click to do that. You'll see that it's created the mirrored copy, but it's just moved it from one side to the other. So in this case, we want the object mirrored and copied. So we'll select that, flip horizontal, and now you'll see that we've got the two hanging holes. And we only need the two in this case so that we can then close out the mirror form. And the next step is looking to create a cross section for the border of our sign. So the, the profile shape that we'd like to make this border. And this is going to be represented with a vector. So we're gonna come over to create vectors again. And this time we'll use the draw polyline tool. And we're just looking for any area of blank space on the workspace that we can just use to draw this up that won't interfere with the, the main sign. So we'll just zoom in on this area here with the scroll wheel of the mouse. And first we're just going to click in any position just to start the points, so left click. And we want to make this line half an inch high. So I'll just increase this until I can see L 0.5. And then I can click there to place the second point. And then I'm gonna bring it across by three quarters of an inch. So overshot there, so 0.75, click again. And then I'm going to bring that back down and this is going to be in line with the first leg. So uh, we'll see that blue line appear. So that will indicate that we're in line with the object bounds of the shape that we're creating. A left mouse click again to place that line. And now we don't need to create any more lines or close that up as a, a close vector. So to come out of the polyline tool, we can just hit the right mouse button and that will close out the form. And now we're going to use the node edit modes just to create the shape that we want for this profile. And first we need to put it into node edit mode. So we can either hit N on the keyboard or coming over to edit objects, we can use the second option next to the selection mode and you'll see node editing mode and we can click that. And the first thing that we're going to do is we'll hover the cursor over this point and left mouse click. And we just want to drag that down into the center and you'll see that when we've hit the center, these two blue lines will appear. And these indicate that we've actually snapped to the center of our object with the smart and geometry snapping switched on. And then in that position, we can just let go of the left mouse button and that will move the node into the new position from there to there. And the next thing that we want to do is these two spans either side of this node, we want to convert to Bezier spans. So to do this, we'll right click on them and you'll see in the drop down to Bezier. So we'll select that. And you'll also see that there's a keyboard shortcut of B. So we can also, for the second one, just hover the cursor over it and click B on the keyboard. And for this node in the center, we're going to want to make that a straight point. So if we just right click, you'll see that smooth point selected at the moment. So if we deselect, that'll convert that to a straight point with two Bezier curves on either side. So now that we've done that, we just zoom in to see what we've got. So we've got these two 
spans, so the two Bezier curves. And as we've now converted them, you'll see that these handles have appeared, so these points here. And if you left click on these points, the handles can then be moved, which will alter the shape of the Bezier curve. So if we move that to a vertical position and we'll just pick that one up and lay that down horizontally. And we'll just match it with this second span, just vertically with that one horizontally. And that's looking pretty close to the shape that I'm going for, actually. If you wanted to, you can make fine tuning adjustments by clicking on the handle and you can use the directional arrows on the keyboard just to raise and lower it, bring it in, take it out just to change the shape of the Bezier curve. But that looks perfect to me. So with that done, we can right click to come out of node editing mode and I'm going to come up to the to the view toolbar up here and we're going to use this option to zoom active view to drawing limits. And moving on to the next step of the drawing, we're going to be looking at creating some leaf designs that will be placed on the left hand part of the circle here. But before we do that, we're just going to lay in some construction lines which are going to help us with the placement of these vectors. Because the end layout that we're aiming for is text at the top and the bottom curved to the shape of this circle. And then we'll have a leaf motif which we'll first draw on the left hand side and then copy over to the right. So to do that, let's go ahead and go back into the draw polyline tool. And first I'm going to snap to this point here using a left mouse click and then we'll move the mouse down and we'll snap to this corner here and left mouse click again. And then by pressing space on the keyboard that will accept that line but remain in the polyline tool form. And then we can come back over and we're also going to place a point here, so left mouse click and dragging it back down to the opposite corner, left mouse click and then space to accept. And we can see now that we've got the circle divided up into four separate segments. So we're done with that and we can come out of the polyline tool. So now we're going to start looking at creating the berry for the leaf design. So using the scroll wheel of the mouse, I'm just going to zoom in onto this area here, which is where we're looking to place the leaf motif. And I want the berry of the design to be in the center point between this circle here and this circle here. So to do this, I'm just going to demonstrate how you can use the smart snapping to find the midpoint between two given points. And to do that, we'll go into our draw circle command and we're just gonna bring the cursor over to here. And I just want to snap to that point there so I haven't clicked the mouse or anything. That's just hovering the cursor over and it's snapped to that point. And then I'm going to move the cursor over and we're going to want to pick up this point here on the inner circle. And once we've done that, we bring the cursor back into towards the center. And you'll see that once it's found the center point, the cursor will change to this icon and the line will turn this gold color, indicating that that's the center point between those two points. And now we know we found that midpoint, we can then start to create the circle. So we'll left mouse click and drag. And we're going to want to circle with a diameter of 1.5 inches. So to do that, we can type 1.5 followed by the letter D and that will place a circle with a diameter of 1.5 inches in the center point between those two circles. Okay, so we can close out the form now. And now we can have a look at creating the leaf part of our design. So to do that, we're going to go into the draw polyline tool and we can start to sketch in a basic shape for our leaf by using one of two methods. So we can either sketch out a rough outline using straight lines of the leaf and then later go into node editing mode and convert these spans to Bezier curves. Or we can make use of the ability to draw Bezier curves interactively with the polyline tool. This is really useful as it makes freehand drawing and tracing more efficient as you're able to convert line segments to Bezier curves whilst you're still in the polyline tool. So we'd click to place the first point and then we'd position the second and this time instead of releasing the left mouse button if we hold that down and drag the cursor out you'll see these handles appear and that indicates that that's now been converted to a Bezier curve. If we then change the position of these handles, you'll see that you're able to change the curvature and the direction of the line. So I'm just going to sketch out a quick leaf shape. Place that there, another curve in there, and you'll see that the direction of the line will follow the handle from the previous line. So we've got that pointing straight down towards the first line, and then we can snap to close that, giving us a very rudimentary leaf shape. But in this case, I'd like a bit more control over the shape of the leaf. So I'm just going to delete that back out 
and we're going to put in some points just marking the outline of the leaf with some straight lines. So roughly like that. And now we've got the basic outline, we can make adjustments to the shape with much more control by using the node edit mode. So to do that, we'll just right click to come out of the polyline tool and we'll select the vectors and we can either click N on the keyboard or come over to edit objects and use the node editing mode. And now we can look to smooth out the shape to make it more organic and realistic looking. And a really quick way of doing this is by selecting the nodes that you're looking to change with a selection box. So if you left mouse click and drag the box out from left to right, and we can make sure that the two nodes that we want to change are inside the selection box, and then we'll let go and you'll see they've turned red to indicate that those are selected. And then there's a couple of different ways to change these into smooth points. So we can either right mouse click and scroll down to smooth point, or you'll see the keyboard shortcut S so we can just hit S on the keyboard and you'll see that those points have now been smooth so they're now Bezier curves. And we've now got all these points and handles that we can make adjustments to in order to make the shape more leaf-like. Now there's various ways in which we can make these adjustments. So we can start by moving the nodes themselves. So you can click the left mouse button and holding it down, drag the node around to change its position. But one thing that will help you when doing this is to make sure that you've got smart snapping switched off. So I have at the moment, so you can see it's greyed out. And that's because as we're working with a more organic shape here, more freehand, we don't want it to snap to any geometry. And then we could start by maybe bringing in these nodes here, just to make it slightly slimmer. And we can also change the curvature of these spans by clicking and dragging the handles out. And you can also do the same by clicking any area of a span and just dragging that so you can move that inside, outside of the line. You can see how that changes the shape. So next I'm just going to bring this one down slightly and do the same on the other side. And I don't think that's looking too bad, so you can click in the white space just to give an idea of what it looks like. And I'm pretty happy with that shape. But I'll just make some more adjustments just by clicking back onto the vectors to reopen the node edit mode. And I'll just move that handle up. I might drag this handle in slightly more and move this one out. And then probably bring this in just to extend the curve down there. Bump this one up slightly. And then as you're going along, you can click into the white space just to see how it's going and then click back on. And I'm happy with this side, but I might just make some further adjustments to the right hand side. And I think I want to just move this up slightly and maybe just nudge that back over just to give a bit more of a smooth curve down this right hand side. And you can zoom in to have a look. That's all looking good. And that's pretty much the exact shape I was after now. So we can click back to zoom active view to draw in limits. So in the separate modelling video for the Magic Bean sign, which you can find through the related video section on this page, we'll be taking a look at using the two rail sweep to create the profile of this leaf. And this would require us to have a cross section and also two drive rails to sweep the cross section in between. And this would mean cutting this leaf shape into two separate vectors. So we'll click back on the vectors to go back into node editing mode. And we're going to take both the top and bottom nodes and we're going to right click on them and we're going to come down to cut vector. So we've done the bottom and now we're going to do the top one. Do the same cut or you could use the keyboard shortcut C. And now you'll see that the leaf design has actually been cut into two separate vectors. So we've got right and left. And now all we need to do is create the cross section which would sweep between these two drive rails to create the profile of the leaf. And we're going to base the shape on an ellipse first. So we'll go over to the draw ellipse command and create vectors. And in the form we're going to specify a width of 1.5 inches and a height of 0.6 inches and we can click create. And that will have now created an ellipse of those dimensions at x0, y0. So we can close out the form and we're just going to move that now into the blank space at the top by clicking on that twice to put it into transform mode and clicking and holding the left mouse button over the center point and just dragging it back up here. And then we can zoom in to get a better look at the shape. So when we create the cross sections, we need to have open vectors. And we also need to make it look a little bit more leaf-like. So we need to make some edits to this shape. So we can go ahead and click N on the keyboard with that selected to put it into node edit mode. And we only actually need the top half of the ellipse here so we can delete these two bottom spans. So we can do that by hovering the mouse, right clicking, and 
scrolling down to delete span or we can use the keyboard shortcut D. So we'll delete that one and then this time just hit D on the keyboard and that will give us an open vector which would work as a cross section for the two rail sweep process. So at the moment it's not looking very leaf like so we just need to make a slight edit to the shape. So I'm just going to box select that node and we're going to pick the node up and we're going to place it somewhere over here just so it looks a bit more like the cross section of a real leaf. And I'm pretty happy with that so we'll just come back up to zoom active view to draw in limits. So we've got the two drive rails and the cross section that we can use for the two rail sweep in the related modeling tutorial. And the next thing that we're going to look at is the fresh coffee text for the sign. So I'd like this to be laid out so we've got fresh at the top which follows the curve of this segment and coffee at the bottom following the curve of the bottom segment. And to do this we're going to use this circle as a guide to align the text to. But before we do that we just need to look at deleting out the parts of this circle that we don't need. So because we're only using the top and bottom segments we don't actually need the left or right parts of the circle. And because we're looking at making these edits it's a good idea to make sure that we've got a safe copy of this original circle. And we can do that by right clicking on the vector and we'll come down to the bottom and we'll use this option copy to layer. So you can see the existing layer 1 there but we want to create a new layer so we'll select that. And we can name this something like safe. And we want to keep layer one as the active layer. And we don't want to be able to see the original circle as we're making edits. So we can uncheck new layer is visible. And we'll leave new layer is active unchecked as well. And we can click OK. And to check that, we can come up to the layers menu. And you'll see that the safe layer is being created. But layer one is still our active layer. And the safe layer is invisible. And all it contains is just a safe copy of that circle for whilst we're making edits. For which I'm going to be using the interactive trim tool. So I'll just zoom in a little bit on this area. So with the circle selected, we'll click the icon. And this will enable me to trim away the parts of the circle where another vector intersects it. So in between these two on the left, just click, make sure the cursor is over the vector. And left mouse click to delete that and we can repeat the same on the right hand side and that's now removed those two segments. So we can now close out of the interactive vector trim tool and we've got two separate vectors, one on the top and one on the bottom. So we can now align our fresh and coffee text to these areas without it bleeding over into the other segments. And the next step in this now is to actually create the text. So under create vectors we're going to come under the draw text tool and first of all, we'll just reset the anchor point to x0, y0. And the text height for now, we'll put that to 5 inches. So you can see the text box has now been placed around the x, y datum. And we can start typing in the edit box here, fresh, and then enter for a new line, coffee. And you can see that's now been displayed in the text box, but the text is far too large at the moment. So we can lower that, we'll go for... We'll just halve it, go for 2.5. Um, we'll also change the font here as well. So uh, font likes uh, impact. So to find that, we can either scroll down or we can hit I on the keyboard. And that'll take you to the fonts with title starting with I. And we can see impacts there, the first in the list. So we'll just click to select that. And now I'm happy with the text. I can click close to close out of the create text form. So we'll come over and we'll have a look at the text that we've created. So at the moment it's as one entity, so fresh and coffee are joined into one object. But I need to break this into two separate lines so we can wrap fresh at the top and coffee at the bottom. So to do this with the text selected, I'm going to right mouse click and you'll see listed down here, break text block into lines. So if we click that and then click to select the text again, you'll see that it's now been split into two separate objects on each line. So we have fresh as a separate entity to be wrapped at the top and coffee as a separate entity to be wrapped at the bottom. And to align it to the curves in these segments, we'll start with fresh. So we'll click to select the first object and we also need selected the curve that we're going to align it to. So we'll hold shift and we'll also select that vector there. And the tool that we're going to use now is the wrap text tool. So we'll come over to create vectors and on the third line here you'll see text on a curve so we'll click that and you'll see that it's immediately wrapped the text with the settings that we've got here so you'll see that we've got a problem straight away and that it's wrapped it on the other side of the line 
So in that case, we need to select this checkbox here, text on other side, which will flip the text to the correct side of the line. And as well as that, we'll just take a look at some of the other parameters in the form. So we've got text space in here. So using this slider, we can make the spaces between the individual characters larger, or we can also make it smaller. And this line here indicates the original position, but I want just a slightly larger gap than that. So I'll place it somewhere around there. That looks great. Moving down, we've got three options for the text position. So at the moment it's above the curve, which is where we want it. I'll just demonstrate these. So on the curve, we'll place it centered and below the curve, we'll place the top of the text on the vector. The next option we actually want to use, because at the moment you'll see that the text isn't centered between the top of the curve here and the bottom. So we can use an offset distance for that. So if we just put in three quarters of an inch, so 0.75, the text alignment will change the start point of the text along the vector. So we can align it to the left, middle and right. In this case, we want the middle. And these two options here will enable you to choose whether you want to change the angle of the text with the curve or keep the text vertical, but place the bottom of the text along the curve like that. At the moment we want a line to curve, so we'll select that. And now we can start to look at the coffee text. So we'll click to select that. And again, we need to shift and select the bottom curve this time. And in this case, it's actually placed the text upside down and backwards. So from the point of view of the start of the text, it's still above the curve. So to fix that, we're going to need to do a couple of things. So first of all, we're going to want to change it below the curve. So from the start of the text, that's below this curve. And then we're going to want to choose text on the other side. And you'll see that that's now flipped it around into the correct orientation. And we want to apply the same offset as the top text, so 0.75. I'm pretty happy with the spacing of the coffee text anyway, so we'll leave that the same. And now we've got those two top and bottom matching, we can close out of the text on a curve form. And now with that done, we can just take a moment to have a look at the created text by putting our part into full view. And I can see at the moment some inconsistencies between the text spacing of the coffee text. So there is another way that we can remedy that without going back into the text on a curve tool. So we'll just make sure that we've got that text selected. And this time, instead of the text on a curve, we'll come across and we'll use the edit text spacing and curve tool also under create vectors. And we'll left click to select that. And if we bring the cursor over and we'll just zoom in a little bit, just to give us a better view. And with the cursor now in between two characters, you'll see that the icons changed and it's now two arrows pointing directly at each other. So this indicates that if we left mouse click, it will bring those two together. And you can see now that that's less than the gap between them. So we can do the same for the O and the F. And if we decided we wanted to widen the gap between two characters, we can hold down the shift key whilst in this tool. And you'll see that the arrows are now pointing away from each other, indicating if we left mouse click, that will make the gap between the two characters wider. So we'll just go through and make some adjustments just until we're happy with the gap between the text. So I'm happy with that now at the bottom. So still in the form, we can go up and instead select the fresh text and we'll just bring this H in and maybe the E and the S. Just until we think the text spacing looks a little bit more consistent because with using the uh, wrap text tool, it will change some of these spaces between the individual characters. So that's looking good. So we can come back into normal selection mode and we'll zoom active view to drawing limits. And now with our text in place, we can look at deleting all of the construction geometry that we no longer need. So to do that, I'm just going to select the individual vectors, holding down shift, just to pick all of those. And with those selected, we can hit delete on the keyboard. And now we can get a better look at how our text looking on the design. And if you remember from earlier, we actually created a safe copy of the construction circle as we were editing it. So we no longer need that now. So we can come up to the layers menu and we can look to delete the safe layer. So to do that, we'll just hover the cursor over the layer title and we'll right mouse click and we can scroll down to delete where you'll be presented with four different options. So you can either delete this layer. So the layer that you've just selected 
delete visible, so all visible layers, delete invisible layers, and delete all empty, so any layer without any information on it. So in this case, we just want to delete that layer. And once you do that, you'll be presented with a dialog box telling you that you still have information on that layer. And this is asking you what you want to do with it. So we can either check to delete all the information, but I have just remembered that we do need to return a copy of that for the design because we've just deleted out the edited construction lines. So I'll choose to move the data to layer one, the active layer. And in this case, it's the only one, but if you have multiple layers, then you can click the drop down box to select them. And with layer one selected, I'll just click OK. And you'll now see that we've got one single layer and we've pulled over that original copy of the circle that we created earlier. So the next step is to create some text to sit in the lower portion of the sign here. So to do that, we're gonna go back over to the draw text tool. And this time we're going to type in magic and press in return for a new line, beans. And we'll just place it down here just so that we can see what we're working with. And we can bring it over and snap to this vertical line here. And at the moment, we've still got impact selected as the font, but we're going to want to choose a different one for this bottom text. So I'm going to choose a font called Cambria. So we'll click C on the keyboard and it'll take us down to the C's and scroll down a bit and we can see Cambria there. So we'll select that and it's now changed it to the serif font. And we're going to want it a little bit larger. So we'll change it to four inches first. And that does look massive at the moment, spilling over the edges of the sign, but we can edit that later. So we'll close out to the create text form. And now that we've got our text, the first thing that we're going to want to do is bring the top line magic closer to the bottom line. So to do that, we're going to make sure we've got the text selected and we're going to come back up to edit text spacing and curve tool. So we'll click into that. And by moving it in between the top and bottom lines, you'll see that as well as editing the text spacing, you can also edit the line. So you'll see those two arrows pointing vertically at each other. So if we just click a few times using the left mouse button, just bring those together and maybe again. Yeah, that's looking great. And that's all we need to do with this tool. So we can go back into normal selection mode. And now we want to edit the overall width of the Magic Beans text. So I'm not too bothered about it being compressed and slightly distorting the font. So to do that, we'll again, make sure we've got it selected. And we're going to go over to under transform objects. We're going to use set selected object size. And I know the exact width I want, uh, but I don't necessarily want to change the height. So we can uncheck link X and Y, and we're going to put in width, we're going to put 14 and click apply. And you'll see that's changed that there on the design. So we can click close to come out of the form. And all we're going to need to do now is just reposition this. So we'll just move it down until we snap, just to even out the space in between the bottom line here and the top, the bottom of the circle. Just drag it. And we can also use the directional arrows on the keyboard just to adjust that. So about there looks perfect. And I'm happy with the position so I can just click off. And now we can move on to the next part, which would be the last of the vectors that we need to draw up for this sign. And these are going to be two coffee beans, which are going to sit in the center of this circle here. And just like the leaf vector, we're going to use an ellipse as the basis for this. So go into the draw ellipse tool and we'll just come up here and we'll snap to the center. You'll see that dot up here. So that's indicating we found the center of that circle. And then we can just click and drag. And we're just going to sketch out a quick shape here. So something like that, like a basic bean shape. And we can right click to come out of the ellipse tool. And we can look to edit the shape of this by using the transform mode. So we'll just click again to put that into transform mode. And the first thing that we're going to do is just rotate this slightly. So you'll see these corner handles here. And if you hover the cursor over them, you'll see it changes to this icon, which indicates that you can then rotate it so you can drag up and down. So I'm just going to rotate it about 10 or 20 degrees. So the angle's about right, I just need to change the shape of it slightly. So holding down the shift just to keep it at the same scale, we can then left click and drag just to resize that. So about there looks perfect. And we're just going to make it wider. So this time we won't use the shift key and we can look to drag that down slightly because we're going to look to make a copy of this. So we've got two beans overlaid. And to do that, we can hold down the control key once we're in the transform mode and then drag the item out. So the control key will make a copy of the item that you're dragging. So we'll place that over there somewhere. 
That looks great. And just to give this a sense of perspective, I'm going to make the, the back beam slightly smaller. So again, holding down shift just to keep that in scale. I'm just going to move that back in towards the center and we'll drop it about there just so the front beam is brought into the foreground a little bit more. And it looks a bit unnatural having them both at the same angle. So we'll just rotate that slightly. And with that done, I'm just going to click off just so we can take a look at what we've got here. So straight away, I'm just going to nudge that up slightly, just the back beam, and maybe move it over just a touch. And I'm happy with the layout now, so I'm just going to pick both of those objects together. And I'm going to click again, just put that into transform mode. And you'll see now that the bounding box has actually encompassed the two objects together. So I can now make sure that these are both central to this circle. And to do that in the transform mode, I'm just going to left mouse click just to pick up the center point. And to do this, I'm actually going to want to switch the smart snapping back on. So with that done, I can pick that back up from the center and we can see that that's, as we move it down the center line here, it's snapping to the central point of the circle. Okay, so that's the basic shape for our beans. But now I just want to make some slight edits to this one here, so to do that, we can select the object and we use this option to zoom active view to the selected object. So that will zoom in on that area. And because we're looking to edit the shape, I'm going to want to go into the node edit mode again. So I can click N on the keyboard with that selected and I'll just scroll out by one click of the wheel just to give me a better view. And the first thing that I'm going to want to do is insert a point around here. So to do that, we'll hover the cursor over the area and we can click I on the keyboard and you'll see that's inserted a new point. And then I want a second point in between these two. So again, hover my cursor where I want the point. And this time, instead of using the shortcut, we can right click and go down to insert point. And now we've got the central point. I'm just going to pick that up just using the left mouse button. And I'm going to drag that inwards just to about there, just so that we get this vague coffee bean profile. And with that done, I can right click to come out of node edit mode and we'll just zoom out a little just so we can have a look at the design in the center. And that's looking exactly how I want it to. So it kind of looks like the, the bean in the background has rolled onto its side. And now I just want to create the crease on the top of the bean in the foreground. So to do that, I'm going to use the polyline tool again and just going to sketch out a rough shape for this. So just something like this kind of a boomerang shape. And then we can either snap to the start point just to complete the close vector. But another way of closing this quickly would be to just hit tab on the keyboard. As we've created this line, we're bringing it down, we can just hit tab and you'll see that that's now created a complete closed vector. And now we can right click to come out the polyline tool. And then just as we did earlier with the leaf design, now we've got our basic outline shape. We can select that again, click N to go into node edit mode, and we can look to edit some of these points. So we'll hit S to turn that into a smooth point and with the bottom one as well. And we can look at making some changes here. So we'll pull these handles up, these points up, sorry. And so that one, and we'll drag this handle out just to change the curve, just to match the outline of the beam. And also with this one, move this point up a little bit on back in. We can also grab the center of a span just to pull the whole thing back. This one up, click into the empty space just to get rid of the handles just so we can have a look. And that's looking perfect. So we can zoom active view to draw in limits and we can just take a look over the whole design just to make sure that we're happy with the layout. We're happy with how the center vectors look here. And there we have the finished vectors for our magic bean sign. To learn how we then use these vectors to model and machine this sign, then please move on to the modeling and toolpathing videos, which you can find in the related video section on this page.